Hello and welcome. This is Kendra and today I'm sharing 15 cards that I created with the April 2023 Crafty Courtyard Kit by Pink and Main. This is called Cloudy Day. A few days ago I shared an unboxing video that shows all of the contents of the kit. So if you missed that video, I will link that above and in the description box below. But here's a brief look at some of the products included in the kit. The Crafty Courtyard Kits are one of the monthly subscription products available from Pink and Main. You can sign up to receive the kits each month. and They normally ship around the 15th. If there are kits remaining in stock after the 15th, you can still purchase it through the end of the month or until it sells out. Your subscription will change to the next month's box on the 1st. If you'd like to purchase, I will have links to everything down in the description box. These are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase, I will earn a small commission at no extra cost to you. But this helps to support my channel. So before we get started, I hope you'll take a moment to click on that subscribe button down below if you're not already a subscriber. So here I'm just quickly showing you the paper pad that comes in this month's kit. This paper pad has 24 double-sided sheets. The papers are a heavier weight paper and they have kind of a glossy finish to them, which I really like. Now I've selected six coordinating pattern papers that I'm using with my new quarterly card challenge number 10. You can download the free printable that contains the cutting guides and the 15 card sketches that shows you how to make a bunch of cards using just six sheets of paper with little to no scraps. Now, if you're not familiar with my quarterly card making challenges, I will link a video below in the description box so you can get all of the details. But you can win prizes for uploading your cards, including a prize pack from Pink and Main, who is one of our prize sponsors. I will put a link where you can download the free printable below also. Now, the last page shows a quick reference guide that indicates which papers you will use on each card sketch so that you'll know which patterns will need to coordinate and go together. But as you can see here, some of these patterns on the back sides of these papers that I've selected, they will not match, but I just want to make sure that at least one side matches the others. In my challenge introduction video, I show and explain how to cut the six sheets of pattern paper using the cutting guides. So I won't show that in this video, but I went ahead and cut everything up and I placed them into some storage bags that are numbered for each of the 15 card sketches. My next step is to go through each of the card sketches and cut any layers that are needed according to those card sketches. The layers are black or gray and each of the sketches have measurements in case you want to just make one of the cards instead of all 15. Some sketches call for embossed or stenciled backgrounds so that's where I'll be using the clouds embossing folder and the stencil that comes in the kit. Now once I figured out what images I wanted on each card, I stamped them all out at once just to save time. I used several different ink colors. I used Barber Shop and Night Sky from Pink and Main. And I also used a light blue color. It's called Breakup Blue from Simon Hurley. I thought these matched the papers the best. But you see, I have some white cardstock placed in my Misty stamping platform, and I'm just stamping these in different colors that I mentioned earlier. Then I took the coordinating dies and I cut them all out and I placed them in each of the bags by sketch number. So now that I have most of the components for my cards, I will show you how I put them together. And I have the card sketch up in the left hand corner. So in addition to the contents of the kit, there's a few extra things that you'll need to make these cards, such as a scoring board, a paper trimmer, a die cutting machine if you're going to use the coordinating dies, some colored ink, some markers, some extra card stock for the card bases, and some adhesive. Card sketch one calls for this big rectangle piece of pattern paper in the middle, and I thought I'd use some additional sheets of pattern paper from the paper pad for some of these cards. So I cut down this ombre pattern to be four by five and a quarter inches for the bottom layer. And then to finish off the card, I added two yellow glitter enamel dots. And if you've watched my videos before, you know I love to add sparkle. So I added some Stickles glitter glue to a few of the stars to finish off card number one. Now for card sketch two, the bottom layer calls for an embossed or stenciled panel. So I embossed a piece of white cardstock with the clouds embossing folder. And I used the yellow cardstock that came in the kit for the card base and for the bottom layer behind that diagonal piece. 
I lined up the corners and I marked the back with a pencil so that I would know where to place the glue. I used the stitched oval die set from Pink and Main for the oval piece. And I added some foam tape to the back of my sentiment and the image to give it some dimension. I used the big roll of foam tape from Pink and Main. This is by far one of the most valuable purchases I've made from them. There's 108 feet of foam adhesive and it's only $20 for the roll. Plus, as a monthly subscriber, you can get an additional discount on everything in the store. So it's definitely worth it to sign up for these kits. But I colored the star in with Y15 Copic marker and I pulled in some blue with the B93 marker on some of the other stars. I flipped the card over and trimmed off the pieces that were hanging over the edge. And I finished off the card by adding some blue glitter enamel dots on the sentiment and some Stickles glitter glue on the stars. And this is card number two. For card three, this is one where I pulled in a piece of purple glitter cardstock from the Fall Glitter Sheets by Pink and Main. I aligned the two smaller rectangle pieces along the top and bottom edge of that glitter strip. I used Barbershop Blue cardstock for the layer behind the middle rectangle piece. And this gets glued on top so that it looks like those pieces are continuous. To keep things level on my card, I glued some scrap cardstock to the back. And I realized after I added glue to the big rectangle piece that that goes in the middle that I forgot to add the 1 8 of an inch strips to each side so luckily I was able to peel this piece off in time before it dried. I added some iridescent glitter peel off stickers from Love From Lizzie for these strips instead of cardstock. For the image in the center I used the dream catcher and for the sentiment I cut out the sentiment that says dream big and I cut that out with some stitched circle dies. And then I finished off the card with some blue glitter enamel dots. For card four, again, I used a four by five and a quarter inch purple glitter card stock for the back panel. The pattern paper I used for this card is probably my favorite out of the entire paper pad. But you want to place these pieces where the glitter background panel will show through between the pieces. So you'll want to try to space these out evenly. Now since I'm gluing these onto the glitter card stock, I wanted to make sure that it would stick well. So I placed my Misty on top of that while it dries to keep it flat. And while it dried, I colored the rainbow image that was stamped with the night sky ink. I only used Copic colors that were in the pattern paper. I started with B93 and then I used BG01 and BG49 for the teal colors and then BV11 and V17 for the purple colors and I used those on the rainbow. I added some cool gray C3 to the bottom of the clouds and of course I added some foam tape to the back of the sentiment that says you are a shooting star and I glued the image flat on the card and finished this off with some Stickles glitter glue on the stars and I added some glitter enamel dots on the banner and this finishes off card number four. Now for card five this sketch calls for an embossed stenciled or pattern paper panel so I decided to emboss some of the blue card stock that's called Riverwalk that came in the kit. I used the uh, clouds embossing folder and rather than cutting a big layer of glitter card stock to go behind the rectangle piece I decided just to cut strips to save on supplies and then rather than using a scallop circle like the sketch calls for I decided just to use the rainbow in its place and this is one that I colored off camera similar to the last card and again I finished it off with some glitter glue and an enamel dot on the sentiment and this is card number five. For card six I decided to use the stencil for the card base. I didn't want the clouds to stand out too much so I used the breakup blue color ink and I used my mini ergonomic blender brush to add the different layers of clouds across the entire card. And I really love how this turned out and I know it's hard to see on screen here but there's just this slight blue um, sky looking pattern. But uh, after I let that dry a little bit, I glued down the pieces according to the sketch. And then for the embellishment piece, I used the moon image and I popped that up with some foam tape and then I finished this card off with some Stickles glitter glue.
Again, this is card number six. Now for card sketch seven, it includes instructions on how to make the paper twist part. You'll wanna measure down from the top to two and a half inches and mark it with a pencil. Then from that mark, you want to measure inward an inch and a half, and then you'll wanna cut along that line connecting the dots. Then you'll wanna fold each flap backwards, making sure to line up the corners to the inner cut line. And before I glue all of this down, I'm gonna stamp the sentiment reach for the stars along with some star images directly onto that light blue panel of cardstock where it will show. And you'll wanna make sure you glue down those flaps on the front of the card too. And then I added the moon mobile image to the center of those two flaps and some glitter to the stars to finish it off. And that's card sketch number seven. Now for card eight, I used a piece of Riverwalk cardstock as the card base. And for the square or diamond pieces, I layered these in the navy blue color. To keep things level, I cut another two and a half inch square. And then I cut out notches where the diamonds overlap and I used the cloud mobile image on top of the middle diamond. And I used a sentiment that says, you are a shooting star. And then I took the smaller star stamps from the stamp set and I stamped those directly onto the card base on the right side as it's shown on the sketch. And um, instead of using my Misty stamping platform, I just decided to use an acrylic block since I already put this together and I totally forgot to do this before I glued everything down. So I would suggest doing this first, but luckily it turned out good. And then after I let that dry a little bit, I added some Stickles glitter glue to all of the stars. And then I also added some glitter enamel dots on each end of the sentiment banner. And this is card eight. So card sketch nine calls for four different patterns from papers A, B, C, and F. And I used the gray card stock from the kit for the back panel. I punched out a starburst circle and then a bigger circle using some paper punches. And then for the three banners, I tried to use my banner punch, but some of the pieces were just too short, but I did end up getting the, the long piece cut. So I used that as a guide to cut the other two banners. So I just marked it with a pencil and I cut it with my scissors. And then I glued all of the pieces down. And then after doing this, I placed the circle pieces on top. And just to make sure that it stays, I added a heavy punch so that it would hold it down while it dried. And this to me kind of looks like a prize ribbon. But I added some foam tape to the back of the sentiment that I cut out with a stitch circle die. And I placed that on top of one of the dream catcher images that I stamped out and colored earlier. And I added a, glim a glitter enamel dot. And this finishes off card number nine. Cards 10, 11, and 12 are all very similar, so I'm only going to show me putting together one. But I didn't like the three different patterns together that I had initially chosen. I had two of the bokeh patterns in purple and blue, and then a really dark purple watercolor pattern. It just didn't go together at all, so I just decided to use the two bokeh patterns together for cards 10 and 11. And then I used the other side of the pattern paper for card 12. So even though I cut the starburst pattern, I decided just to piece it back together.
My cards 10 and 11 are glued down directly onto the piece of night sky cardstock that I used as the card base. And I used some Love From Lizzie peel off stickers on top of the seams. You could also use skinny strips of cardstock on top of the seams if, if you don't like those showing. I used some of the cloud images for the focal points on the Boca pattern cards and two different sentiments that I stamped onto banners. And then I added some of the flat confetti pieces all over from the exclusive sequin mix from the kit on both cards. And then for card 12, I used a piece of craft card stock for the base and I just added some thin gold stickers to cover up the seams and I used the dream big sentiment for that one. And then for card 13, I paired the two bokeh patterns together again. This is a unique sketch and I mentioned in my introduction video that you could turn this into a gatefold card if you'd like, but I just decided to make it a regular A2 card. I lined up everything as best as I could and I glued it down directly onto the card base. And then once everything was glued down, I added some iridescent Love From Lizzie peel off stickers along the seams. And I ended up using the star mobile image and I popped that up with some foam tape and I placed another banner underneath it. And to finish it off, I added some glitter enamel dots and that finishes off card number 13. Now for card 14, I decided to use another pattern paper from the paper pad for the back panel. I just love the ombre glitter pattern and all of these colors are in each of the pieces. So I layered each of the strips on top of one of the blue canvas pattern papers from the paper pad. And I cut out one of the sentiments and I cut that out by hand and I glued it onto a circle that was also cut from that leftover two inch strip of the glitter pattern paper. It's actually not glitter but it looks like glitter but I added some stars in place of the hearts as shown on the sketch and then um, to finish it off I just added some glitter of course I have glitter on every single card but this is card number 14 pretty simple now for the last card number 15 I used the cloud border dies from the kit to cut off the edges of my light blue background panel. I used some strips from the glitter paper to glue next to that middle rectangle piece rather than cutting a layer to go behind it. And I colored the cloud mobile image with some Copic markers to match the colors on my card. And I used this in place of the rectangle on the sketch. So of course, I didn't end up using the two small rectangle strips that go at a diagonal you see on the sketch. I didn't put that on top either. I used Copic colors that matched the fake glitter strips to color in the cloud mobile. And instead of popping this up, I just decided to glue it flat on the card. And then for the sentiment, I stamped reach for the stars with some light blue ink and I cut it out with a small stitched rectangle die also from pink and main. And again, I added a glitter enamel dot on the sentiment and then three dots across the bottom. And I added more glitter glue to the stars. And this finishes off the last card, card number 15. So here are all 15 cards. I think they all turned out really pretty. But I think it's easy to make cards look pretty when you have beautiful pattern paper like this. This is probably one of my favorite kits so far. I'd love to know which card is your favorite. Please let me know down in the comments section. For your information, I use six sheets of white heavyweight cardstock, a sheet of craft cardstock, one sheet of six by six purple glitter cardstock, a sheet of barbershop blue cardstock, plus a couple of sheets of the Riverwalk cardstock in addition to the cardstock that came in the kit. Overall, it took me about four hours to make. Now remember, you'll need to sign up for the monthly subscription boxes by the 14th to guarantee that you'll get a box. And if they have any left over, you can continue ordering through the end of the month until they sell out and they start shipping on the 15th. 
I'd also like to invite you to join my quarterly card making challenge number 10. It's a lot of fun and you'll have a chance to win some amazing prizes. Now challenge 10 ends on June 30th of 2023 so you have plenty of time to create your cards. Again for more information click the link down below in the description box. If you enjoyed this video I'd love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. I appreciate you watching this video and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day and happy crafting!